Hello, Can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you We have four minutes before contacting the ISS. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. Echo India 1, India, Sierra, Sierra. Over. Echo India 1, India, Sierra, Sierra. This is Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. This is Echo India 1, India, Sierra, Sierra, we hear you um, a, a little faint for the moment. How do you copy us? Over. Hey, this is uh, the International Space Station, and uh, I have you uh, clear, a little bit faint, but welcome aboard the International Space Station, and I'm ready for the first question. Over. Question one. What experiments do you think Leonardo da Vinci would carry out if he was in your place? Over. Hey, that's a fantastic question. I think he would love to be here. He would have uh, much better access to seeing the clear stars. And I think his creative mind would look at what we have available and he would come up with experiments that we couldn't even think about. Over. Question two. What are some of the most interesting experiments that you have been a part of in space? Over. There are lots of them. I think some of the most interesting is looking at fire behavior and how liquids behave. And right now I'm growing uh, some uh, plants, some lettuce, and hopefully we'll be eating those soon. Over. Question three. Could you simulate gravity with a centrifuge on the ISS? Over. Yes, we, we can and we do. We do have some centrifuges on board. Uh, we can use them either for our blood samples, but then we have some experiments that go longer term using the centrifuge. Over. Question four. What is your favorite aspect of being in space? Over. Well, floating is something very unique that we get to do here, and that's fantastic. But I think uh, looking out the window at our beautiful planet. Over. Question five. Do your cells and hair grow faster or slower on the ISS? Over. Uh, that's a good question. I think they grow about the same. I haven't measured them exactly, but it seems about the same. Over. Question six. Is there a limit to the amount of water you can use, and how do you get more? Over. Yes, yeah, so water is definitely very important. Luckily, we can uh, recycle and reclaim uh, more than 90% of what we use, so we recycle our urine and our condensate. Over. Question 7. Are microorganisms affected by microgravity, and how does this affect digestion? Over. Well, I think everything is affected by the microgravity, and that's part of being over here. Luckily, our digestion, uh, it adapts very quickly, and I've seen no changes. Over. Question eight. Is there a safe time limit in which an astronaut can be in space? Over. Yes, there is. Uh, we all wear uh, dosimeters looking at radiation, and so it depends on solar activity. Uh, but it looks like, um, you know, around the year time frame right now is safe. Over. Question nine. Can you give one example of how augmented reality could save time on the ISS? Over. Well, there are lots of examples, and I think when we do maintenance work, if we had an augmented reality, it would save us a lot of time, and people on the ground could see what we're doing and help us. Over. Question 10. Is time passing slower for you than it is for us? Over. Yes, with where we at and the speed we're going, it is uh, right about the same, but I'll tell you, it seems like the time is flying by up here because we're having a lot of fun and working really hard. Over. Question 11. I have read that your sense of taste changes on board ISS. Does this mean that you could eat the hottest pepper on Earth? Over. <laughs> That's a good question, too. Um, our taste, uh, for some people, it definitely changes. For me, not a whole lot. 
but I don't think that any of us want to eat the hottest pepper on earth. That sounds too painful. Over. Question 12. What changes does the human body go through while in space and after going back to Earth? Over. Yeah, there are lots of changes, so we work out for a couple of hours each day to keep our muscles and our bones strong. So it's really, when you get back, it's, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get used to gravity and also your, uh, your sense of direction, it also changes, so that takes time when you return. Over. Question 13. Will it be possible to carry out deep space exploration without the use of artificial intelligence? Over. I think it would be possible uh, having you know computers and humans aboard, but having artificial intelligence, I think, would very much enhance the process. Over. Question 14. What is the most difficult activity that you encounter every day? Over. Well, dealing with microgravity can pose its challenges, but I think the most difficult part is we read so many procedures and we have to get everything exactly right every day, and that's very tiring. Over. Question 15. Does the ISS send information in real time to help to track storms? Over. Yes, we do have uh, real-time information going back. Uh, we have some uh, experiments that are doing that. And then the astronauts, we also take pictures to help track the storms. Over. Question 16. What do you usually do in your spare time? Over. I think we do a lot of the same of what you do. Maybe get on the internet, watch movies. We have a telephone, email. But looking out the window, I think, is our favorite pastime. Over. Question 17. Could the robotic arm be used to protect you against space debris? Over. The robotic arm probably could not because it moves so slowly and the space debris is very small and very quick moving. Over. Question 18. Does NASA plan any more updates to the station? Over. We are always updating the uh, hardware that we have up here. Uh, we're looking at adding our capability for more astronauts to be up here to, to go higher than six. So yes, we are updating it all the time. Over. Question 19. Is it hard to sleep in space as you float? Over. It's actually very nice to sleep in space. We have a sleeping bag that you can attach to the wall or you can just sleep inside your little, uh, your little crew quarters, but it's super comfortable sleeping in space. Over. Question 20. If the colonization of Mars is reliable, when are we going to start moving there? Over. Well, we're making plans now to try to get to Mars, but I think it's still going to be a while, and hopefully some of you will have that opportunity. Over. Joe, thank you so much for answering those questions. Everybody here is just dumbstruck, and we want to show you how much we appreciate this from the thousand students here in Cork and from the over a hundred people in Romania. A big round of applause, please, for Joe. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. Echo India 1, India, Sierra, Sierra is saying 73s, bye bye, over. Now you can all breathe. Wasn't that fantastic? And and weren't they all weren't they all crazy? I would like to thank the international volunteer team of ARIS and also the Radio Amateur Satellite
corporations around the world. I also need to thank the American Radio Relay League, the worldwide AMSAT, Amateur Radio Satellite Corporations and Space Agencies, the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, the Japanese Space Agency, Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, and NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, who have made this live demonstration of practical radio communications possible today. And now, Nadia, we would like to hear from you in Romania. What did you think of that? What an amazing experiment. Everything went well. Everyone learned something from this unique experience. And this event was a great opportunity for students to find out new things about space and the uh, International Space Station directly from there. Thank you very much for the Irish team because you shared this amazing event with us. Thank you very much, Ireland. Over. Th thank you so much, Nadia. We're, we're delighted. And Dan, I cannot see Dan. Ah, he's gone missing. Mr. O'Sullivan is missing. Dan, what do you, what do you people here in Glanmire think of this? I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can never predict uh, how people are going to re respond uh, to this kind of an event. I'm hoping there are people out there and they're just inspired, uh, particularly some of the younger audience, us old guys, you know, I think. But even, uh, even us old guys will probably be inspired today. And I just want again uh, to reiterate uh, our, our deep gratitude to the ARIS team, she Seamus yourself, Daniel and Joe Ryan. They've been absolutely fantastic. And thanks to our audience as well for cooperating throughout. That was, uh, we really appreciate that as well. Before handing back to Glenn Meyer for some more entertainment, I have to really thank the amateur radio technical team. The target in these uh, communications are, is to get 20 questions answered. So guys, you got 10 out of 10. Daniel Cusson is our chief technical guru. Not alone is he becoming a radio engineer, but he's also an audio engineer. Dan, thank you. And Joe Ryan was in charge of tracking and timing. Thank you, Joe, for keeping me on the straight and narrow. And Jerry Cahill, beside him from Cork Radio Club, and there are members here from Cork Radio Club, they're lined up against the wall there, including Jim Barry and, and uh, Kieran and Dave, and they have been very helpful to us in putting all this together. So, Jerry got to play astronaut out in the car park. Thank you, Jerry. And a specific thanks, ladies last, and a specific thanks to Anna for all the work she has done. And, you know, we keep changing our mind, but Anna was more than able to cope. So, Anna, we thank you. Aris sends greetings to the Irish Radio Transmitter Society, IRTS, and also to FRR, the Federation of Romanian Radio Amateurs. And to everyone here in the hall and listening, guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as we here in the Radio Amateur team did enjoy setting it up.